Yes. I'm all about that. Right, let's go over then, <laughs> shall we? So Coach Helen for you fit studio. Talking, right? I value a lot of this. Maybe. Challenges. Challenge yourself. Now, again, this one was planned. Ooh, what month are we now? September. September. So before I knew we were doing the um doing the D1S challenge for uh, members and non-members. So way before we even had the the idea given to us by one of our own, one of our own, da Danielle, we did not know I was going to do this, but I was going to talk about challenges anyway, because I think challenges are an awesome way, like I talked about yesterday. Isn't it funny how you throw out the word challenge and suddenly, suddenly, everyone finds fifth gear. I mean, some people are probably in reverse, found first gear, uh, which is brilliant. I absolutely love it. Not poo pooing that at all, no, no, right, in any way, shape, or form. It's just interesting, right? Because you say the word challenge, and suddenly people go, It's like, What? Meerkat. That was my meerkat move. Meerkat. Ah, oh, you say challenge. I am in. Ooh. Now, I say this before I get into it. I find it fascinating. I don't know if it's a competitive side of people, which is possible. I think there is a, there's a smudge. Oh, that was smudge or smith a sprinkle. I'm not I'm I'm not Nigel Lawson. I've been watching that not not Nigel Lawson we talk about things like this. A sprinkle, a a, sh a a Christmassy shower of competitiveness, I feel. See I went on topic there, that was just for you, Kate. I mean you keep throwing in Christmassy theme throughout this. <laughs> Kate's Kate throws back a number. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> That's how many days before Kate gets into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> However, getting back to what I was talking about, my Christmassy challenges. And I'm not talking about Christmassy challenges, but I'm saying that uh, it's actually really funny that you, you say we're challenging and some competitiveness comes out in some people. Uh, and it's that or lots of people say, oh, I just needed a kick up the arse. I just need a little bit of a push, a little bit of a, a, a oomph, a vroom vroom, right? And so challenges really do create that. Now, what's interesting is the ones I'm talking about today are, are, are actually self-managed challenges, right? Which I think are a little bit harder, but actually what, one of the things I want to talk about today is that when we talk about um, challenges often, when it comes to, to health, we automatically, and you know, in fairness, we've, we've done this before, we've done other challenges as well though, uh, majority of the time, a lot of people say it's right, I've got to lose the most weight <laughs> or do the most or do the best i must do the most amount right um but actually that's not always hey lola screen time going up <laughs> it's not always it's not always the motivation for a challenge right sometimes uh you can challenge yourself on your own behaviors okay so rather than seeing it's right i must change myself to lose more weight or I suppose training is a behaviour, but I'm talking about other things today, or 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 all the nutrition side, right? This is other things away from that because actually sometimes to challenge yourself is to push yourself out of your comfort zone, and to take yourself a little bit further along the journey than you are right now. So it's seeking improvement. A challenge is about seeking improvement for me as a coach, not about being the best or losing the most or just being super competitive about it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does, it motivates some people. However, the word challenge can be, can be something else entirely, right? The thing is that they have to, right? The ones I'm talking about today, have to be something that, yeah, I don't know, but this, I love a challenge. I might have one in here, Valley, that might be for you, of these three. I could, ooh, ooh, that's pick one for you, but I'm not. However, all right, because I've just got through, so I'm not over, going to overwhelm anybody with multiple choices here. Uh, <laughs> however, they do have to be something that's against your existing behaviour. They have to be something that really challenges you. Oh, values like this. Ooh, scared now. They, <laughs> they have to challenge you. But they do, because actually if something doesn't push you out of your comfort zone and uh, move you towards a different behaviour and different habit, then it's not really a challenge, is it? It's just changing normal life but it has to be something that's difficult right something that you're not ooh, don't know about that 
It's like me talking yesterday when I said something. Oh, look, it's pitch black out there. Do you want to go get some steps in? She's got 12,000 to get. Oh, no thanks. I challenge you to go out there and get 12,000 steps going today. Ooh. Okay, well, before I found that very difficult. But now I'm... Ooh, can I? Can I? Can't I? Well, you can, actually, because people proving they can, right? However... <laughs> These are just a couple I come up with, right? But these are ones to really challenge your normal behaviour to some degree, right? And and ones that I'm finding a lot of right now. How are we ready for? <clears throat> <clears throat> challenge number one. To challenge number one. Ironic, considering that I'm on the internet while doing this. Hasn't gotten a notice. <laughs> Get this one. Oh, this might be... I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's like box A, B, and C, isn't it? It's like... Oh, no all in his blouse. <laughs> Fair what do they do? Banker. Which box do you want? Which challenge? Okay, number one. Number one challenge. No phone. Ooh. No phone for the last and first hour of the day. Mmm. Now, why would that be a challenge? Well, I think, oh, <laughs> something like this. But I'm watching this on my phone. This isn't the last hour of first hour of the day, thankfully. Thank God. Except how many of us have our alarm on our mobile phone? How many of us just have a little, little shifty through Instagram before sleep? Or check notifications? Or if you're a real hardcore, just checking my work emails? Yeah. How many of us do it? But how many of us also wake up in the morning having turned the alarm off on the phone and then keep the phone in the hand. What's the first thing you do in the morning that isn't based on your phone? So like, oh, first, that's fine, yeah, but think about it. Actually, what are your existing behaviours with your mobile phone before bed and first thing in the morning? Is it the last thing and the first thing you, you touch before bed? Because I can pretty much guarantee it is for a hell of a lot of people. Someone's going to type and go, I don't touch my phone before bed. Mm, I don't know you do it in the morning, right? But truly, really not be in contact with your phone for the first and last hour of the day. Super challenging, right? But what does it do if you were not? Some of you, like, some of you might be watching, listening to this, either live or later, going, ooh, I feel a bit uncomfortable about that one. I don't, I don't like it. Oh, 8 p.m. Right, so they're straight in. I turn mine off at 8 p.m. So I can't phone you. At, I'm going to phone you at 8.05 tonight. <laughs> Layla! <laughs> Wait, enough. I think that's brilliant, Layla. How about the mornings? And it's great that you do it in the evenings. And I think it's fantastic to do this. And I think it's a... Uh, and, I, I, and I'll say... I'll, oh, have I got it here? I might have. Actually, I'll show you what I'm doing before bed right now. Is my book. <laughs> so, <laughs> just say I'm challenging myself because I, I wrote this while ago and I thought, you know what, I should actually start challenging myself to do more of this stuff like this because actually it's, yeah, you have it at 3 a.m. so you're on your phone by 4. Right, so this is the book I'm reading right now. I do suggest it. It's quite, I like a good thriller horror, quite gruesome though, so just don't. It's a good book. So this, is, this is mine. Also, I like to read it in the afternoon sometimes as well to relax. Um, however, uh, that's something, right? There's something to replace the evening. But what does it do, though? Uh, well, for any of you who do or don't know, if you've not tried this, it does completely shut off your brain, uh, not being electronics before bed. Uh, it, it, it still amazes me that... Uh, not amazes me, I just understand that some people, uh, if a doctor's clients, still uh, have not come across blue light blockers for electronic devices. Um, again, just explain that a bit more. Again, for those clients who, who don't know or, or, or people watching. So that the, the light from your electronic devices, uh, your brain reacts to it like it's daylight. So your brain is not really understanding that you, you want to sleep. So your sleep hormones get disrupted. So if you're constantly looking at electronic screen with no blue light filter on, I'm very lucky to have, you can probably see it, look, you can see it on my glasses. I've actually got blue light uh, thanks to a very, very kind client who got me these sorted. Um, have a blue light blocker on my glasses. But it doesn't stop me also turning on the, the blue light filter. So if you have that setting, make sure you do that if you're gonna still use your devices, right? It improves sleep for that reason, right? So not using devices for bed allows your brain to shut down properly. Hence why I've just thrown my book away. Hence why uh, I'm reading before bed, because it's a good book, but I do not straight. <laughs> I think I get too much, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> right? Helps to sleep re reduce uh, stress as well. 
So how many, again, so I talk about the, the evening, I've talked about work emails, but it's also that morning thing, right, where people wake up and go, work, <laughs> or messages, or just straight, springing into action straight away and grabbing an electronic device, phone or iPad or otherwise, right, or laptop, some people if they're going to bed, right, oh, just on this topic, okay, when I say no phone, or probably do mean all electronic devices, I don't mean you can go to bed and put your iPad on, which should also be avoided, right, the same reasons, so it reduces stress, right, and it helps you to rest mentally, so no phone one hour before bed and first thing in the morning. Say a flan, that is a challenge. You say, like you can do it for, I haven't said how many days, but I say that for 10 days, right? There's, these, these are all 10 day challenges. Seven days is too short. 10 days is a stretch because that takes you through the weekend. So it takes you through staying up late and, and looking at YouTube. Gosh, YouTube. How many people find that their FaceTime fascinating if you do the challenge? How many hours of your life got sucked into YouTube? Oh, we've got, we've got an Instagram. This means that I said Instagram, so that is. Oh, no. Right, so you've been, on, you've been on there way too much. Right, so that's challenge number one. No phone for one hour before bed and waking up in the morning for 10 days. Right, if any, if any of you, uh, if you, if you guys get on this, you please let me know, because I'm sorry, if you get, get some of these, you feel amazing. <coughs> On the sleeping issue, because it is such a massive thing that it can be impacted. Eight hours of sleep a night. Layla's already like laughing. Layla's like, ah, I wish. Ah. <laughs> okay. First things first, right? Um, I want to talk about this slightly differently because we always talk, talk about, well, not always, but often when we think about sleep, we think about the routine before bed because that makes sense, right? Good, Nazarene's going to tie the tent. Yes, Nazarene, get on it. Right, we always talk about the, the what you do immediately before bed, and granted I've just done that, but I also did something else that was important. I talked about the waking element as well, uh, because it is equally as important. Uh, when If any of you caught my um, period cycle seminar, I talked a lot about it, about how the, the everyone's, oh, well, everyone, not women's bodies, everyone's bodies, especially when I was talking about that, it's just a miracle of balances, right? So everything, for everything there's an equal inside, right and that goes for sleep as well there's a, a hormone released for waking right so cortisol cortisol isn't evil we talk about it as a stress hormone but actually it allows you to wake and we talk about uh uh melatonin right and how they interplay with each other and how too much cortisol can keep you awake at night hence why not having a device will reduce your stress levels and let your melatonin rise okay so we also want that to diminish. We want melatonin to come down in the mornings. We want stress levels to recede so we actually wake up naturally. But it's not just that, okay? The morning routine is actually really important in terms of seeing natural light, okay? So actually ensuring you have a really great morning routine is as important as night routine because it's the yin to the yang, right? Yes, I could talk about the night routine. I could talk about the sleep stairs, right? It's everything. Sleep is dead, right? Everyone has their own steps to go upstairs, to go to bed, that puts them into a sleep state, right? Meditation, hot bath, nice book, soft lighting, right? No electronic devices pinging off. No. Oh, what was that game that used to be? It used to kill people's sleep. The fruit one. Do you remember what it was? Oh, that might actually annoy me now. That I can't remember what it was. So thank God I don't remember what it is. But that was the killer of all sleep, right? Because people would wake in the morning and start playing it. So they'd be playing it late at night. But the morning routine is really important. It's getting back to the initial point, right? The morning routine is as important. Uh, grounding. Like, I'm, I'm a big fan of grounding. If people know what grounding is, check it out. I love it. I haven't done it as late as much because I keep thinking I'm going to, like, step on some twigs and stuff. However, in the summer months, I love grounding. Grounding for me is awesome. Uh, it's feeling the grass underneath your feet first thing in the morning. Oh, God, someone's told me it's Candy Crush. Thanks, Nazarene. <laughs> Ooh, Candy Crush. Killer of all sleep and heightening of stress. However, uh, grounding in the morning is fantastic. It's an uh, thing of the body. Uh, yes, it's slightly on the the, the ah, approach to things. Uh, however, I always say it's like, and everybody else gets this. I hope someone else gets this. It's like um, there's a soothing and calming element to it, feeling your feet on grass. Which I think is a bit like, uh, I hope it's just not me who gets this, when you go on a beach for the first time and not been on a beach for ages, the feel of sand under your toes and the water as it comes between you, your feet. That is that is grounding. So that is, a, that is a, a way of seeing grounding. Grounding is brilliant. I love it. 
definitely a morning thing really balances everything out so consider your your um so the, the eight hours sleep yes but consider that and the look at your mornings before you start looking at what's going on at night are you rushing out the door to your office to work <laughs> or you still might be going to the office you know so we could be working right are you uh leaving it as the alarm exactly the amount of time to get changed to get in the shower to turn on to flip up the laptop are you knowing that that you're rushing around in the morning and that's setting your day up in a stressful way to create eight hours isn't to go to bed a lot earlier and earlier earlier although it's kind of help it's also looking at your morning routine and seeing actually what's realistic and how much time do you actually need in the morning as opposed to what you take right one more now this one i don't know i'm just gone dry as well uh, <laughs> 10 days, right? 10 days of three litres of water. Dun, dun, dun. If you're not already doing it. Now, water is amazing. I've done plenty of labs about water. I think I've done two now. However, can't state it enough. Fundamental for health. Fundamental for being able to poo. To set it. I said the word poo. Sedge has just joined where I've gone poo. <laughs> hey, Sedge. I got my decks out as well. Look, hey, that's just for you. Uh, I said, I can't get through life without using a naughty poo. Keep saying it. Yes, you do need a hell of a lot of water to make your body work and do what it needs to do. Um, for loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of beautiful things, and also poo it. Right? There is also an element, and we say it. I say it a lot. There's a difference between being full and being thirsty and sometimes you don't know the difference if you're on a weight loss goal please for the love of god increase your water uh it will yes give a sensation of being fuller but actually that's your body saying actually i don't really need food i need water please hydrate me you know three liters is a lot now three liters is just kind of context because like, oh, three liters often i have been being i had a pint i was like well a pint doesn't cover it so it's four of these now, I started this one myself uh, last week, just in preparation for this. So, yeah, I, 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 okay, here's the thing about water, guys. If you're struggling with water and getting water in, I would say my best advice is get it in early. Get it in early in the day. Do not be leaving it until six o'clock at night. Get it in early. Please, for the love of God, if, it, if you wake and slam it back, wake and slam it back. Best thing to do, wake, slam back at 7.50, then you know, one more. That's one and a half. An awful. Yeah, you can get it done quite quickly. The best advice, get it done early. 10 day challenge, right? So all these things are things to personally challenge yourself. But I can't hold you accountable to it. Uh, the, the benefits and the things you get out of all these things will, will keep you running on something like this, right? So just to recap, because Sedge has joined us. So Sedge, this was a, I, this is probably my favorite, the first one. Uh, so challenges, right? Challenges aren't just about losing weight. They're about improving your habits and behaviors because that's what we need, right? If you want to get the outcome, so you focus, I could do that, just that. Outcome goals versus behavioral goals, right? Behavioral goals, where you look at things like this, will give you the outcome goal. So you'll get what you're looking for if you focus on habit and not the outcome, right? So first one, no phone. One hour before bed and one hour after waking. Dun, dun, dun. Dramatic music again for people joining. What? No fun. No YouTube. No Instagram. No just checking the sky updates. That then. Right? One hour before bed and one hour after waking. Use something else as an alarm. That would be interesting. It's something else other than your phone. So you're not using your phone. Ooh. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Right? Eight hours of sleep a night, create a sleep routine, think about your morning, think about your night. Right, I could have banged on about night all day, but I said, you think about your mornings, actually. If you're struggling with a sleep routine, think about your mornings. What's happening in your morning that's the yin to the yang. It's equally as important to see daylight first thing in the morning. Get outside, ground yourself, don't have a crazy roll out of bed, roll in the kitchen, roll in the shower, roll into the living room to work, right? There's a routine that will help you in the mornings as well. And lastly, three liters of water a day. Now, you don't have to do all three of these, by the way, because, you know, it's quite, all these are quite challenging. Why I chose them, right? So remember, top point, it is meant to be difficult. If, it, if, it, if you feel that you're going to break at day four, you know you chose the right one. 
Because day four, you'll be getting the benefits, but you're feeling it hard, right? And don't know that this not always about weight, losing weight. Again, it's about your habits. Improve your habits, improve your outcomes. Whew. Okay, here we go. The best foods for fat loss. Throw that one out there. Just stay there, just make that statement. The best foods for fat loss. Just eat these, you lose, lose it. It's fine. <laughs> Join me for that one. In the meantime, have a fantastic evening. If you're decorating, like me, yes. And by oh, tomorrow, you might come back and I've got a whole menagerie going on. I won't. I won't do it to Kate. I think she'll implode. But <laughs> the idea of it makes me laugh. But <laughs> until tomorrow, have a great evening and a great day tomorrow.